We shouldn't expect scientists or archaeologists to be able to explain all of the secrets of the past and present to us. After all, it's not like historical records and relics come out of the ground with a handy manual or biography attached to them. If they did, the world might be a much simpler place. We have great affection for mysteries both ancient and modern, though, and we put some great ones together in this video for you. Let's kick things off with a burial ground in northern France that contains the remains of several Stone Age men, but just one woman. These people were laid to rest in a monumental cemetery at Fleury sur Orne some 6,500 years ago. What's puzzling archaeologists about the discovery isn't just the presence of the woman, but the fact that the woman was the only person at the site to be buried with weapons. To be more specific, she was buried with arrowheads. Experts aren't sure what to make of both the fact she was a woman and the fact she was buried with weapons and surrounded by men. Might she have been their queen? If so, why were none of her people armed so they could protect her? Was she a warrior woman who protected her tribe? Was she viewed as male by her peers? Perhaps the act of burying her with weapons made her symbolically male and gave her the right to be buried alongside the men. Actually, on the other hand, maybe our confusion has more to do with the fact that there's still way too much we don't know about the lives and cultures of our Neolithic ancestors. Some people say that our next discovery is the most mysterious in Chinese history. These are the ruins of Hecheng in Aksa, China, also known as Karakoto or Blackwater City. The walls here have been standing since around the year 1032. This site, in the middle of the Inner Mongolian Desert, is about 20 miles from Dalehubu and was once a vital link in the famous Silk Road trade route. In fact, the fortress that stood here was the largest anywhere along the Gansu Corridor. Because of its strategic importance, it was a major capture for Genghis Khan and his Mongol hordes when he seized it in 1226. But even under Khan's brutal rule, Haichen continued to thrive. Marco Polo visited it on his travels and remarked on the isolation and peculiarity of its culture, which he felt was markedly different from anywhere else in the region. The precise identity of the culture that created and lived in Haicheng is unknown. The fortress was still in use throughout the Yuan Dynasty, which lasted until 1368, but became abandoned during the subsequent Ming Dynasty and has remained that way throughout the centuries that have followed. If you know a thing or two about archaeology, you'll have heard of most of the important cities in Peru, but you may not have heard of Piroro. It's a little-known historical and archaeological site in the Huanuco region of the country's Tatamayo district. But it's nevertheless listed on Peru's National Cultural Heritage Register. Piruro has been abandoned for a long time, but it was occupied for far longer. Evidence of human occupation as long ago as 5,000 years has been found at the site, after which people continued to live here until the time of the Inca Empire in the 15th and 16th centuries. The oldest of the two fortresses here is so old that it was built during the pre-ceramic period. Historians have a dim view of the capabilities of the people who lived in Peru during that time, and yet they created a five-floor fortress out of stone and mud with a makeshift ladder at the back to enable people to climb from the top to the bottom of the exterior quickly and efficiently. What do we know about the people who built Piruro? Sadly, almost nothing. The Tsar of Draw is one of the best known and most appreciated ancient sites in Algeria, but is largely unknown outside the country. You'll find it, or rather its ruins, in Timamon, standing alone and surrounded by miles of featureless sand dunes. Perhaps the reason that the Tsar of Draw is barely known outside of Algeria is that not even the people who live closest to it can say how long it's been there. They also don't know who built it or why. Because of that, it's hard to say what this circular structure was used for. It could have been a fortified castle, but it may also have been a military post or perhaps a prison. Another theory is that it may have been a particularly large caravanserai a sort of roadside inn where travelers could break up a long journey and rest overnight. There would certainly have been plenty of accommodation if the Tsar of Draw were a caravanserai. There are layers of rooms three levels deep. 
What makes a military or defensive use more likely is the fact that these rooms are surrounded by double walls. On the other hand, the windows of a military building would have faced outwards. The Tsar of Draw appears to have had no outward-facing windows at all. There's a place in Yemen known as the Well of Hell. It's so deep that nobody knows what's at the bottom, nor does anyone truly understand the processes by which it was made. Locals say that it was created as a prison for demons, hence its name. We can probably disregard that suggestion, but it would be nice to have a scientific explanation. Most scientists think the Colossal Hole, which is also known as the Well of Barhout, has been where it is for millions of years. Local legends say that anyone who even gets close to it will be sucked in with no chance of escape. For all we know, that's true. Estimates of the depth of the hole range between 330 feet and 820 feet. That's not so deep to prevent people from getting to the bottom, but nobody's ever tried. Or at least nobody's ever tried and come back out again to tell the tale. That might be due to the fact that it's unlikely to be any light or ventilation at the bottom and probably precious little oxygen. To add to the mystery, the well has occasionally been known to emit strange, unpleasant odors. Did the Pueblo people of Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, USA have extra fingers and toes compared to the rest of the human race? If not, they must have deliberately painted extra digits onto the hand and footprints they decorated the walls of their homes with. A survey carried out by researchers on the remains of Pueblo people has indicated that a higher-than-average number of them had polydactylal, the presence of additional digits, but the genetic abnormality still accounted for far fewer than one-tenth of them. If five-digit handprints and footprints also appeared on the walls of Pueblo homes, there wouldn't be an issue, because only the six-digit prints exist. Archaeologists theorized that people with additional fingers and toes were viewed as having been gifted something special by the gods. A five-fingered person might invite a six-fingered person to come and place their handprints on their home because they'd view it as a form of blessing, for example. The Pueblo people lived in the high desert area of the canyon a little over a thousand years ago, and there's still a great deal we don't know about them. We're returning to Peru now because we want to talk about the Amaracari face, carved into the country's cliffs within the Peruvian part of the Amazon. The native Harakabit people claim ownership of the face and refer to it as Rostro Harakbit, which translates into English as the face of the Harakbit. But it's impossible to prove that their ancestors created it. In fact, nobody has any idea who made it or how long it's existed for. Some people even say it's as old as the Earth itself, although that would be impossible. While some geologists and archaeologists have claimed that it's a natural formation and people only see a face there because they want to see it, there are some signs of tool work around the nose, eyes, and mouth that suggest it was carved deliberately. It's also strategically placed in a location that overlooks a river basin and a waterfall, creating a natural amphitheater. It's likely that the people native to this part of the world carved his face hundreds or perhaps even thousands of years ago. But the knowledge of why they did it and what they meant by it has been lost to time. Legend has it that Royston Cave in Herefordshire, England was a secret hideout and meeting place used by the Knights Templar. We can't prove that it was, but we also can't prove that it wasn't. It's a mysterious place covered with strange paintings and inscriptions on the walls that appear to draw influence from several different places and many different eras. Some of these symbols definitely relate to the Knights Templar, but they're side by side with pagan symbols. The Knights Templar were Puritans and wouldn't have tolerated the presence of pagan symbols alongside their own, so that leaves us with three possibilities. One is that the pagan symbols were added long after the Knights Templar symbols. Another is that this was a secret meeting place for a splinter group of the Knights Templar who held some unusual beliefs. The third is that Royston Cave is a hoax and the paintings are fake. That seems unlikely. The cave was discovered in 1742 and was investigated thoroughly at the time, with most experts concluding that it was genuine and an undisturbed product of the 13th century. Without further discoveries at the site, we'll probably never know who created it. 
As fascinating as Chinese bi disks might be, they're not a riddle to archaeologists. They know all about the 5,000 year old creations and what they were used for. The ornate creations look like a donut but were inscribed with both religious and natural symbols and buried with people of high social status during the China of the Neolithic era. What's a riddle, though, is how one of them suddenly turned up in a garden in Kentucky, USA in 2015. Wherever it came from, the artifact is genuine. It's made from nephrite jade and features a shoey dragon and it contains four Chinese script characters. It's a textbook by disc, but it just turned up one morning in a civilian's garden in Harrison County without explanation. One day it wasn't there, and the next day it was. The civilian who found it had no idea what it was, and it took him two years to get a positive identification of it. So it's unlikely that he forged it. It's possible someone else threw it into his garden, but why would anyone throw away such a valuable ancient artifact? Maybe historical curiosities have started falling out of the sky in America. Now it's time for a golden treasure discovery from Kazakhstan. There in late 2018, archaeologists discovered a treasure trove of golden items in the Tabagadi Mountains. There are more than 3,000 items in the collection, all of which are thought to be about 2,800 years old. The discovery was made close to the Yeleki Sazi archaeological site which makes it likely that these beautiful pieces belong to high-ranking members of the Sakha society. The Sakha controlled significant amounts of Central Asian territory 2,800 years ago and were considered to be an offshoot of the even larger Scythian society. While there are too many stunning pieces of jewelry here to name them all, the standouts among the collection include bell-shaped earrings, necklaces made of precious stones, and incredibly well-crafted and realistic depictions of animals. The standard of the craft skill on display here is comparable to anything you'd find in the modern world. Some people would go so far as to say that it exceeds it. It's thought that there are up to 200 undiscovered burial mounds in the same vicinity, so this might be the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's to come in future years. Artifacts like China's Puzzle Balls, also known as the Puzzle Balls of Guangzhou, can never be produced again. That's because they're made of ivory, and there are now legal limitations on what can be done with ivory. Even if it were permissible to use ivory for such purposes, though, it's not certain that we'd be able to replicate them. Their level of complexity is simply astounding. The first mention of them comes from the writings of the Ming scholar Cao Zhao in 1388, in which he referred to them as the Devil's Work Balls. He was suspicious that the beautiful balls had been created by witchcraft. Zhao couldn't fathom how the inner balls floated freely inside the outer ones, or how the network of holes in their surfaces seemed to change as the outer ball rolled across the inner. Two 19th century examples of puzzle balls are held in the collection of Chicago's Heritage Museum of Asian Art, by which time the art of making them had reached its peak. One of their examples has 25 separate layers of ivory. The objective of the puzzle ball is to solve it by making all of the holes align using a toothpick or something similar. But the task is far harder than a Rubik's Cube. Just when archaeologists think they've seen it all, something comes along that takes them totally by surprise. In April 2020, archaeologists in Siberia came across the 2100-year-old tomb of a warrior sealed inside a burial mound and surrounded by the burnt bodies of more than 200 people. That was strange enough. But inside his tomb, they found a death mask, and inside the death mask was a skull. The skull is not that of the warrior, but that of a ram. The death mask is life-sized and sealed, so scientists use scanning technology to look inside it rather than breaking it open. The warrior belonged to the Tagar culture, which is known to have had elaborate funeral rites, but nothing like this has ever been found before, and historians have no idea what to make of it. Siberian death masks have been discovered before now, but they're always found to contain the skulls of the deceased. One possibility for what happened in this case is that the ancient inhabitants of Siberia worshipped rams, so replacing the warrior's head with a ram skull might have been intended as a mark of respect. 
subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.